Hey everyone, it's Haney again, and welcome to part two of our musculoskeletal and soft tissue ultrasound day. Now we're going to spend some time talking about soft tissue ultrasound. Again, we'll start with the how and cover the basics of the soft tissue exam. Then we'll talk about cellulitis versus abscess. And then last, we'll talk about foreign bodies and foreign body removal. So starting with the basics, the probe that you want to use for the soft tissue exams is the linear probe. It's the highest frequency probe that we have and really the best at seeing those superficial structures. Again, you have to use a lot of gel for this exam, especially in soft tissue exams because the patient may have quite a bit of pain. So using more gel allows you to press less hard and make it more comfortable for the patient. Similar to musculoskeletal ultrasound, soft tissue follows the same approach. You want to put the probe where it hurts and then put the probe where it doesn't and compare the contralateral sides. Again, you want to scan in two planes and it's always beneficial to scan the healthy or unaffected side to compare it to the affected side. Reviewing our anatomy one more time. So this top layer that we see here is actually the epidermis and the dermis. The next layers are the subcutaneous tissue. So this is the fat, connective tissue, blood vessels, etc. The next layer is the superior muscle fascia. Following that is muscle. And then last, this hyperechoic line and this anechoic shadow is bone. So when you're doing soft tissue exams, you really want to focus on these top two to three layers. So we'll start with cellulitis. There are several key sonographic features that you need to look out for. The most common is actually tissue distortion. We are not going to be able to make out the nice clean layers like we saw on the normal example. Next, you'll see thickening of the subcutaneous tissue, and you may actually also see thickening of that dermal layer as well. You may or may not have cobblestoning, and this is important to know because cobblestoning is often a later finding of cellulitis, so it's not a requirement to diagnose somebody with cellulitis. And then last, the fat that you see will actually look hyperemic, or it'll look bright and whiter compared to the healthy, unaffected side. So here's an example of a patient with right arm cellulitis. This patient is a known IV drug user. But again, if you look at the normal side and compare it to the abnormal side, you see one, distortion of tissue. You're not able to make out the nice clean layers of the skin. Two, is you see actually thickening of the dermis up here compared to the dermis on the normal unaffected side. Three, you do see the thickening of the subcutaneous tissue. So on the normal example here, you see the thickness to be about this length here. Whereas on this example here, the thickness is far superior to that, far larger than that. You do not see cobblestoning on this example. Again, cobblestoning is a later finding, so you may not always see it. This is actually what cobblestoning looks like. And the reason why we call it cobblestoning is you see quite a bit of this subcutaneous edema. And that actually layers in between all of the different globules of fat in the subcutaneous tissue, giving it the appearance of cobblestoning. But again, it's not a requirement to diagnose somebody with cellulitis. As with musculoskeletal ultrasound, it's also important to compare the sides as well. So here we see what healthy tissue looks like, where you're able to see and make out the nice clean layers of the skin versus unhealthy tissue or affected tissue. And on this example, you're able to see quite a bit of thickening of the dermis here and then this pretty significant cobblestoning. But most importantly is that the tissue is distorted. You're not able to make out those nice clean layers that you were able to on the normal example. So it's also beneficial to consider to compress cellulitis. You may encounter a case that looks like this. So on this example, you're seeing some irregularity and some distortion of the tissue here. You're actually seeing a little bit of cobblestoning here as well. But when you try to compress, you notice that you're able to compress the artery here, but you're not able to compress this structure here. And that's because there's a clot in it. This is actually a case of superficial thrombophlebitis. So if you see a vessel when you're scanning for cellulitis, it's really important to try to compress it because the treatment for this is actually quite different. Patients often need NSAIDs, warm compresses, and depending on the location of the clot, may actually need anticoagulation. So you treat it much differently than you would a soft tissue infection. So to recap, 
cellulitis has several key sonographic features, including tissue distortion, thickening of the subcutaneous region, and you may also see thickening of the dermis as well, plus or minus cobblestoning, but again, it's not a requirement, and then hyperemic fat. Switching gears, we'll now talk about abscesses. Abscesses on ultrasound appear to be a fluid collection that's contained within one specific area. It's mostly hypoechoic, but abscesses can have quite a bit of debris in them, which may appear to have hyperechoic features as well. They'll often have an irregular border. And then last and the most important thing is to pay attention to posterior acoustic enhancement. Remember, ultrasound waves love going through fluid-filled structures, and it'll reflect the waves back to the ultrasound beam when it hits fluid and cause everything behind the ultrasound or the structure of interest to appear bright and white. And that is really the feature and the hallmark of abscesses that I want you to take away from this. So here's an example of a patient who had an abscess in their right armpit. So again, this is a pretty large abscess, but what you're seeing here is one, an irregular border to this abscess itself. Two, you're seeing an anechoic fluid collection in here, but there's actually some debris in here, which kind of gives it the appearance of some hyperechoic features as well. And then three, you're seeing this bright white shadowing behind the entire abscess. And that's that posterior acoustic enhancement that I want you to pay attention to. And we'll talk about why that's important here in a minute. And here's another example. Again, you're seeing an anechoic fluid collection. You're seeing some irregularity to the, to the abscess wall. And you're actually seeing some debris in this abscess as well. This is another hallmark of an abscess is you can actually slightly compress the abscess. And you may see the abscess contents itself swirl around. We actually call that pusatility. And that further proves to you that that's an abscess. Again, pay attention to that posterior acoustic enhancement. You see here pretty clearly that everything behind the abscess itself is nice, bright, and white, and everything kind of on the other ends of it is that darker color. So again, compressing abscesses might be pretty painful, but it could also give you some useful information. This was a case of an ultrasound that we had recently that was initially read as cellulitis. So at first glance, it doesn't quite look like an abscess, and I can see why that happened. But if you look closer, you actually see that there is a fluid collection in here. This does appear to have some irregular border walls, but this is an abscess that's completely filled with debris from top to bottom. So there, it, it doesn't need to have that anechoic feature like we pointed out in the earlier examples. So when you actually compress the abscess, you actually will see that the pus or the contents within the abscess itself will actually swirl around a little bit, as you see with the arrow here. And again, pay attention to that posterior acoustic enhancement all back here, because that's another hallmark of abscesses over cellulitis. And then the last point that I'll make is use color. It's a really quick and easy way to make sure that what you're about to cut into or aspirate is not something more concerning than just an abscess. And here was an awesome case that we had pretty recently. So on initial look, right, this looks like it could be an abscess. It has some maybe irregular walls. It's got some heterogeneous material in it. It's got some anechoic material in it. And it's got that nice posterior acoustic enhancement as well. But when we actually throw a color Doppler on this, we see that this is a very highly vascular structure. It's got quite a bit of vessel in between it. This was ultimately found, a biopsied, and found to be a plasma cytoma variant of multiple myeloma. So I'm really glad I didn't cut into it. We'll play a quick game called Abscess or Not. I'm going to show you a series of images, give you a little bit of time, and then tell you whether or not this is something that we should cut into or not. So this is the first case. It's a 29-year-old male coming in with groin pain, swelling, and fever. Do you see an abscess here? Now what if I actually showed you this? What if I used color Doppler and was able to show you these two vessels that kind of appear to be at the uh, borders or the end of the structure that we're seeing? You're right. 
this is not an abscess. This is actually a lymph node. And some of the features of the lymph node are one, that they're vascular structures. And using that color Doppler, you're, you're able to actually see those two little vessels. Two is they won't have that swirl should you compress on them, like we saw with the abscesses earlier. Three, they often have a bright center. And four, they often have a darker rim. So absolutely do not cut into this. And be especially weary when you're ultrasounding in a region where lymphadenopathy is possible, such as in the groin or in the axilla or in the neck. Here's another example. Now this is a 67-year-old male who presented with groin pain and swelling after a recent heart cath. Do you think this is an abscess? No, this is actually a pseudoaneurysm. So if you were to put color Doppler on this, you'd actually see the classic yin-yang sign or the Pepsi-Cola sign, which is the hallmark of a pseudoaneurysm. And this should be pretty obvious. I mean, you're seeing the flow in here kind of pulsate in the way that a vessel would. Um, pseudoaneurysms are caused by damage to the arterial walls, and they kind of result in a, in a locally contained hematoma, but the blood flow between them is quite turbulent. Here's another example. Now this is a morbidly obese 37-year-old male presenting with groin pain. This one's a little tricky. It's actually a hernia. And if we were to watch this pretty closely, you'd be able to see some peristalsis throughout this region as well. But again, this is pretty thin-walled. It has a nice regular appearance, unlike the abscesses that we saw a little bit earlier. And then this is the last case. So this is a 32-year-old male presenting with a lump on his back, which has been present for the past six months, but slowly growing in size. Do you see a fluid collection here? No, this is actually a lipoma. So it's a little tricky um, because it does look to have some irregular walls as well, but the contents within this itself actually looks like the surrounding fat as well. They have the same echo texture. If you were to compress this, you wouldn't see any of the contents within that move. The last thing that I'll say is that this does not appear to have quite the same posterior acoustic enhancement that we saw with the abscesses as well. So this is not something that you would want to cut into. And then last, this is a case of a 45-year-old poorly controlled type 1 diabetic coming into the ED with scrotal pain, fever, and vomiting. Do you see any evidence of abscess? There's no abscess here, but this is actually pretty con concerning. This is actually neck fash. So with neck fash, you see all of the classic features that you would in cellulitis. Distortion of tissue, you may see some cobblestoning, you'll see thickening of the subcutaneous tissue as well. But you're actually seeing a pretty concerning thing on this ultrasound, and that's these pockets of bright white throughout this area with this dirty shadow behind it, which you really can't see anything through. Those are actually little pockets of air that you see in neck fash with that casting of a dirty shadow, which would be more concerning. Neck fash specifically has some other interesting findings to look out for. One is that thickening of the tissue that we pointed out in the earlier example. Two is you'll actually see a deep fluid stripe, and that's a more sensitive finding. So essentially, you'll see fluid kind of tracking above that superior muscle fascia. You may actually see some irregularity and some thickening of that fascial line as well. And then last, and actually the least common finding that we see on ultrasound and neck fascia is subcutaneous air. And here's that example of that layering fluid collection that we see with neck fascia. So again, you have the subcutaneous uh, epidermis, dermis up here. You have subcutaneous tissue here. This is your fascial line, and you see that line is not clear or crisp. It looks kind of shagged and almost a little beat up. And then right above it, you see this layering fluid collection as well. You see something similar here as well. So this is the subcutaneous tissue. This appears to be the muscle, and this is the fascial line here. You're seeing some irregularity to this fascial line, and then you're seeing this fluid stripe just above the fascial line. The thickness of this stripe has actually also been correlated with the degree of neck fascia, and that if you have a thinner stripe versus a thicker stripe of fluid there, that the thicker stripe is probably more sensitive for neck fascia. So to recap, abscesses, they're fluid collections that are mostly hypoechoic, but they can have some hyperechoic features to them. They'll often have an irregular border.
and pay attention to that posterior enhancement. Ultimately, you should ultrasound every abscess before you cut into it, and don't forget to use Doppler to make sure that you're not cutting into something that's highly vascular. We'll change gears and we'll talk about foreign bodies. So foreign bodies are awesome on ultrasound because a lot of the foreign bodies that we commonly see, things like splinters or glass, et cetera, may or may not show up on x-ray. And foreign bodies on ultrasound are pretty easy to catch. They show up at the, as these bright white hyperechoic bodies. They'll sometimes have some artifact associated with that. Plus, depending on how long it's been in there, you may actually also see some surrounding changes of cellulitis and or an abscess. This was the case of a person with a sewing needle stuck in their arm. So what you're seeing here is this is the wrist and you're seeing some surrounding cellulitis, some cobblestoning, some distortion of the tissue here, but you're also seeing this bright white linear structure here as well that appears to cast a little bit of a shadow. So that is indicative of a foreign body. Here's another example. Again, I believe this was a, a splinter that was in somebody's foot. What you're seeing here is some surrounding changes of cellulitis and some thickening and some edema here with this associated hyperechoic linear structure. And then this is another example. Do you think that there's a foreign body here? Yeah, this one's actually really tricky. Um, this was a patient that stuck an entire cap of a pen in their forearm. So what you're seeing here is actually, this is all the foreign body that you're looking at right here, but it kind of looks like the fascial line. It kind of looks like that, that line um, that we saw pretty clearly earlier. But if you actually notice, there appears to be muscle on top of this and below this, whereas that fascial line that we saw in the earlier example, there was there is no muscle that sits above the fascial line. You'll have fascial line and then you'll have muscle beneath it. So removing foreign bodies by ultrasound is also incredibly useful. Again, you can do this in one of two ways. So one is to find the foreign body on ultrasound in both the long and the short views and actually center it in the middle of the probe and then mark each end of the probe with a skin marker. Connect the lines and then the middle point where they all intersect should be where you incise and should be where your foreign body is. You can also do this ultrasound guided. Essentially, you locate the foreign body with the ultrasound, which you see here pretty clearly. You make an incision in the skin here, and then using some type of tool, either a forceps or tweezers, you can actually guide and direct your forceps into the foreign body itself and remove it that way. It's important when you do this though, to also just be sterile, make sure you're using a sterile probe cover, et cetera. There it is. So to recap, for soft tissue infections or evaluating for abscesses, use ultrasound first. Please remember that cobblestoning is not a requirement to diagnose somebody with cellulitis. When looking for abscesses, they can be pretty tricky, especially if they're filled entirely with debris and pus. So really pay attention to that posterior acoustic enhancement and always look before you poke use that color as another adjunct because you don't want to end up cutting into something that's not an abscess.